I want to talk about the in-string function, or INSTR function for short, because there's a lot more to it than first meets the eye. And I thought I'd explain that with a very simple example. We'll use a simple string in a table. So first I'll create a table and just put this very simple string in it. Connor's gonna go have a burger at McDonald's. Now I wanna stress, there's no sponsorship here. I'm not on commission from McDonald's. I have no commercial relationship with McDonald's. I have no idea if Oracle has one, but it's certainly unrelated to this video. I just needed a string which had the word McDonald in it twice for some simple demos, and so I chose my surname and the restaurant. But please, don't come looking to me for a free burger. So the most common use of in-string is in its simplest guise, which is with two arguments. I take the source string, in this case the column from the table, and I take the candidate string that I'm looking for. In this case, I'm looking for MC. And as we can see, it comes back with a value of eight. That's the first occurrence of the word MC, the first part of my surname, and it's the eighth character in the string. But in string can go a lot further than that. The first additional parameter I'll throw in is the third parameter, which is you can nominate where to start in your source string. So in this case, I'm saying start at the 10th character. So that's gonna bypass the first occurrence of MC, and it arrives at the MC for the McDonald's restaurant. In this case, that's position 25. So you can nominate whereabouts in the string you can commence your search from. Now, if you don't know where to start from, you, the requirement was actually, I need to find the second occurrence of McDonald or just MC. You don't have to pick up random starting points. The fourth parameter in in-string can nominate the occurrence of the string that you're searching for. So now I've got one comma two, which is start at the first character and find the second occurrence of MC. And that way I return the same value of 25 being the McDonald's restaurant reference. If the requirement wasn't to find the second occurrence, the requirement was to find the very last occurrence in the string, which happens in this case to coincide with the second occurrence, you can manipulate that third parameter by choosing a value less than zero. Minus one means start at the very last character and work your way backwards. I could do minus five to start at the fifth last character, etc. But the moment it's negative, it says start at the back and work your way backwards. I still get a return value as a positive offset. It's still 25 from the start, but at least now I can find the last occurrence very, very easily. If you need even more flexibility from in-string, we have a variant called regular expression in-string, which effectively takes that and adds even more flexibility. You can use it just in the normal way with its two parameters, it'll still return the same value. It found MC at the eighth position. But that second parameter can also now be a regular expression. A full list of how a regular expression works is perhaps beyond this video. And uh, there's an old saying, which is if you, have a, if you have a problem, you can use a regular expression and then you have two problems. But to give regular expression its dues, here's a simple example of why, I can, why it's so powerful. I can, in this case, search for MC followed by a series of alphabetic characters, then followed by an S. Therefore, I'm now eliminating the first occurrence of McDonald and ending up on the McDonald's plural because of the regular expression syntax I've used. Once you get into using regular expression in string, the list of variations and parameters goes even further. In this example, I've got four additional parameters. The first one being similar to in string, it's where to start. The second one being the occurrence, as in the same as in string, where do I start, what occurrence am I after? The third parameter, I'll come back to in a second, but the fourth parameter is of interest here, the lowercase i says I'm doing a case insensitive search. There's a few other values you can use as well, but the most common one is I want to ignore case. So in this case, no pun intended, you can see I was searching for uppercase MC, but it's still matched on the mixed case MC in my source string. Returning now to that third parameter, it's all about deciding what value you get back when you actually match on a search. So in this case, I'm using one comma two comma zero, which is start at the first character, find the second occurrence of MC, I'm choosing to ignore case, and I can see I get the value back of 25. That's where the name McDonald's starts in the string. If I flip that third parameter to a value of one, it's telling me to, when I find a match, return where that string matching completes. So in this case, I hit the match at character 25, 
but there were two characters in my match, MC, which means return the first character after that match, which is character 27. So I have that flexibility of deciding whether the component I matched is part of the return value of instring or whether it is skipped over to return the next characters. And finally, there is even an additional parameter to regular expression instring, which is what we call a sub-expression component. In this example, I'm searching for the string McDonald, but I've put extra brackets in there, which identifies the searching string as what we call a list of sub-expressions. I'm first searching for MC, then I'm searching for DON and ALD. That is three component sub-expressions. When I get the entire match, that last parameter, value of three there, says I want to return the position of the third sub-expression. So I found the string McDonald at position 25, but the third sub-expression, being the ALD, was found at position 30. Hopefully now you can see the enormous power and flexibility in instring and its regular expression variant. It's pretty much equipped to handle almost any kind of text matching business requirement you could come up with just by utilizing the flexibility and the parameters you have there. So yes, you'll probably use it just with two parameters most often, but be aware there are so many options available to you.